To say that I'm overdue a new video would be a significant understatement, so um, sorry it's been so long since I've done the videos, but uh, you know, life is throwing all sorts of nasties at us at the moment with this pandemic and everybody being in lockdown for months and um, I kind of still am for me, so um, yeah, it's, it's all been a bit, bit complicated, so uh, hopefully um, I'll be able to do a few more videos from now on and I have been collecting up some kits um, which we can talk about and show you of which one is here and uh, trying to also find stuff that's a bit different from the, the usual clocks and flashing this that and the other so and this is one of those examples this isn't actually from Banggood like everything else is um, this is actually from Amazon <clears throat> And uh, if I remember, I'll stick a link in the description. Uh, it's from the UK Amazon site, but it may very well be uh, in other sites in your location, where are you, wherever you are around the world. So, any road, let's have a look. This is, as you might be able to tell, a strap for your wrist. And it is actually a wristwatch. Now, I have done a wristwatch before, um, a while ago, and uh, it wasn't very good. But I saw this one, I thought, well, let's give it a go. Um, and it actually comes with a strap, which is actually not too shabby. It's quite nice, actually. Um, it says it's genuine leather. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, okay, it says genuine leather, whether it actually is or not, I don't know. But um, it feels like a fairly substantial strap, so that's nice. Uh, this little bundle of fun, which is the good old-fashioned bits of acrylic with paper protection on them, is the case. Um, we have in here, I would imagine... Uh, well, I can see the main board... And, yeah, we have a little OLED screen, I think it is. Yeah, that flapping about there. Thank God I haven't got to sold that, solder that on. That's already soldered on, so that's good. But you can see there's uh, all surface mount components to play with here. So uh, watch your soldering iron when you're around that lot. What do you got on the back? And a lot more there. It's a fair old bit to this. So uh, that's the screen, with a little plastic protector on it for the moment. Hardware to put the case together. Um, looks fairly nice, brassy looking risers there. And we've also got a couple of uh, pins for the uh, strap, the watch strap. And we have in this bag, get to the instructions and we'll see how it works. We have got another board which is going to be the power supply board because that's four four count them four batteries um and the batteries aren't provided which is, might be a bit of a problem because i'm not sure i've got any that will fit this but we shall see we have a bunch of i don't know if those are resistors or capacitors it might be capacitors actually, but we'll see. Let's just tip it out. There we go. All tipped out. Yeah. Uh, now these are the capacitors. I think the other ones were. Ooh. Sorry, probably made you feel seasick there. Uh, now those are the capacitors. These are the resistors. 183s. Is that 10k? I think those are. 103 is that 10k? I can't remember now. And we have a chip. We have a number of these, which are the battery holders. Let's get those out of the way. We have another chip. Probably got that upside down, yeah. There we go. Don't know what that chip does. Don't know what any of it does, frankly. We have some buttons. Push to make buttons. We have... Ooh, 
These are tiny, fiddly. I can't even see what that is. My eyes, hang on a minute. Feeling that might be an, ooh, feeling that might be an LED, but I could be wrong. Uh, don't know. Very tiny, whatever they are. We'll work it out eventually, as always. And uh, whatever that is, power uh, transistor of some sort. Don't know. Seems a bit much for this this watch, but I don't know how much power the OLED draws. It's got five, uh, four, ba uh, four batteries after all. That is a crystal in a. Now wait a minute. That's not a crystal. That's a. That's a micro USB port. That's interesting. It can't be for power because uh, recharging because those aren't. These aren't rechargeable batteries uh, types, they're just like button cells. Quite a lot of stuff in there, another chip. Um, another, I don't know if that's a transistor or a op amp or whatever they call them, I don't know. I'll just solder these things together and see what the hell happens. What on earth are they? They look like, they look like diodes to me, but... Um, yeah, and uh, what well, we got another, I can't even see, oh, it's another trans uh, power type chip, oh, I don't know what they are, I'm not even going to pretend I know, a couple of bits of wire, um, a couple more resistors, two, Oh, 2K, is that 2K? And another button, wish to make button. And that's all she wrote. So that's all the components. Let's put them over to one side and have a look at the instructions. Okay, so what have we got here? Mm. Yep, so it's OLED, watch installation instructions, we have got a parts list, we have got pictures of how the beastie looks completed, some guidance on soldering SMD components. Um, if you've seen any of my videos, I've done loads of components like this over the past, so but we will show you how, that, how I do it on this one as well. Uh, USB, I still don't know what that USB fork is for, can't be power. Um, and the enclosure installation sequence diagram. Um, so you can see the side view. It's going to be quite thick. I would, well, actually we can tell how thick it's going to be almost by this. Um, that's going to be, uh, yeah, quite chunky. What have we got on the back? We have got um, the instructions on how to use it. You can see how it looks there. Micro USB socket is on there, overload. Uh, and this is how to program it well, to, to use it once it's built. Circuit diagram. Uh, and there looks like to a graphical tutorial. Mm. We will have to have a look at that. So, I need to get myself set up with all these bits and pieces and the instructions. I'll probably have a look at that as well. It'd be silly not to. Um, and um, let's see how it goes. Right, okay. So, using this QR code, um, it takes you to this website. It's all in Chinese, simplified Chinese, uh, which I don't read, of course. But... Um, what it gives you is a is photographs, fairly detailed photographs of where each of the components go, as you can see here. So we've got 202 resistor, 2K resistor, I think that is, a capacitor, uh, whatever that chip is, da-di-da-di-da. -da -da -da. 
and uh, basically outlines where the uh, where everything sits. Um, you know, and there's the rear of that same board. Uh, as you can see, again, it's fairly clear where all the resistors and capacitors go. Um, and there we see the connections for the, so that's what those little wires are for, are providing power from the power supply board. And there's a chip that goes on that as well, presumably regulating the power in some way. Um, I still haven't quite worked out what the point of the uh, USB port is yet. Um, this is all in Chinese, um, which is fine. Um, the photographs tell you everything you need to know uh, in terms of building it, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated to know what the USB port's going to be doing. Uh, I don't even know what type of batteries it takes. It doesn't actually say, and I can't quite read what batteries they're using, but um, yeah, we'll work it all out. It might actually tell us here. Again, this is all in, yeah, uh, ah, CR1220. That looks like the type of battery. Uh, CR1220. Okay. Um, 3.7 volt batteries. Now, I don't know whether these batteries are wired in series or in parallel. I don't really know how much power an OLED display needs because that's obviously going to be the thing sucking up the most. Um, USB is mentioned there. And, oops. And it then starts talking about voltages again that's the battery voltages so i do wonder if it is power what i'm going to try and do is see if i can get a translator to read this text and see if i can get it translated into english and here we are with the full circuit diagram of the device but let's get back to the beginning and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start building this following the photographs so now seeing as the first photograph is the uh do you know i'm just thinking it would be better to start with the rear of the board see there's another battery there that's odd let me have a look yeah it's got another battery So is that five batteries? Really? There's a, there's a, I keep knocking the camera, sorry about that. So you've got a battery there, and then you've got another four batteries here. How bizarre. I don't understand that at all. Well, I mean, if it needs that amount of power, it needs that amount of power, but Oh, there you go. I am conscious of um, this LED screen getting damaged too easily. So what I'm going to do, I think what I will do is, seeing as the majority of com components are on the reverse side, that means I've got to have the LED face down while I do those. I'm going to do those first and uh, put this on a uh, protective cloth or something I'll, I'll find something in a minute um so we don't bugger the screen up okay so let me get set up with the soldering iron and the tweezers and all the other bits and pieces and let's see if we can put this watch together without making a complete and utter pig's ear of it right so i've just laid this board down on a piece of micro microfiber cloth just to protect the screen and Hold on to it. A bit of luck, I won't set fire to the cloth with my soldering iron. So I'm not entirely sure this is the most sensible thing I've ever done. Um, but let me bring it round this way because that's the same orientation as the photograph. And let's see what we can see. Now, what I'm going to start off with, I think, is looking at the photograph. And that's the second photograph on the list, if you're following it along with that is I'm going to start looking at some of these um, uh, resistors. So we're going to start off with R16, which is VAR. 
and that is I think there's that seems to be I mean there are loads and loads of resi oh I'm sorry I'm really gonna have to get something a little bit more stable than this um because you're going to be complaining about throwing up every time you look at my videos um i well, are probably doing that already but never mind okay so i'm going to do all the 103 resistors um which i believe is 10k so that's 10 and three zeros i think that means 10k doesn't really matter it's what it is isn't it um so every all the resistors numbered 103 is what we're going to now look at and uh, what I tend to do with these is I, I tend to install them in bulk. Um, do like-minded or, or like components together. That was probably a bad idea. I have now got a bucket loads of very tiny resistors all over the freaking place. How stupid. There you go. Let's see if we can't clean this area up a bit. Um, yeah, that wasn't the most sensible idea and actually I'm suddenly realizing that using I mean these are so these are smaller than the grain of rice um, these are uh, that using a microfiber cloth probably wasn't a good idea because the pile in that is too deep uh, and is an excellent way of losing these tiny uh, tiny components so there we go this is i guess one of those situations where i make stupid mistakes so you don't have to um but i was a bit paranoid about damaging the uh, uh damaging the screen so um you're having to watch me clear up my bloody mess now not exactly the most enthralling video experience you'll ever have. But there you go, I'm not a professional. <laughs> no shit, you say. Never mind. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and quite simply, um, what I will do now is grab myself a bit of sealed air. Still using this thin stuff, which I've got many of, or much of. And the way that I do, so we're going to start off with R16. And I'm actually looking at this through the camera, because it's actually acting as a bit of a microscope for me. So there we go. A blob of solder on that pad. Oops. Uh, out come the tweezers. Yeah, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to get these components off the uh, the microfiber cloth. Um, it doesn't really make it being a resistor. It doesn't matter matter which way up it goes. So there we go. Reheat the solder. Offer up. Oops. If you've got really shaky hands, this is not the kit for you. Right, put a bit of pressure on it, reheat. So that should be nice and flat against the board now. Uh, now we just turn it round to the way. Move my laptop back a bit. And uh, actually we'll bring it back this way. We'll solder the other end of the re resistor. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to find a different uh, different surface to put this on. But there you go. That, that's that resistor in. So that's our first component. So all the resistors and all the capacitors are going to be installed that in that manner. Um, here's a bunch of the capacitors. So what I'm going to do is install all of those and then see uh, the next step. 
which uh, I'll get back to you on. So I'll install all of those now, find a bit of surface to put this on, and uh, catch you in a minute. Right, well I've um, done most of the resistors, in fact I think I've done all the resistors on this side of the board down here and you can see that I'm still knocking the camera you can also see that I've uh, held the board down rather than using that microfiber cloth which was a stupid idea um, I'm just holding it with a bit of Rodico which is a bit like blue tack and um, you can then maneuver it around um, in any direction you want which makes it a lot easier for soldering so uh, that, that seems a, a better solution and you're not putting too much pressure on the board so it doesn't really matter with the screen the other side it has got this plastic uh, protector on there for now to just leave that on there while you're while you're building the thing i think but let's have a quick look at my soldering efforts so that you can have a laugh yes they're not very straight and i've got some peaks on the uh, uh on the solder which i'll have to get rid of uh just to make sure we don't get any shorting out um, but other than that, that's the way it's going. So we've got things like the uh, diode, uh, which go in there. Let's see, we'll focus this in a bit. Um, uh, you know, some diodes there, and we've got some capacitors here, and all the rest of it. And they'll get installed the same way as the resistors. There's, uh, there is, of course, a polarity issue here with the diode so uh, I'll install those so you can say, see which which way round they go but the rest of them are um doesn't matter which way they go so let me populate this board a bit more and uh, I'll show you the results in a moment right so a little bit of an update on progress hit the camera and uh, there we go so we've got the uh, we've got a couple of the uh, two diodes in these are, I, th I think these must be inductors. I don't know. Um, the resistors down here, a couple of capacitors. Um, yeah, these three pin inductors, or whatever they are, um, the way to install those is just solder that one first, make sure it's flat to the board, and blob, blob, and they're in okay, no problems. Um, so, what we've got left is the main chip here and a chip here. Uh, the battery holder and a couple of uh, power wires, or power supply wires, switch there and another switch there. So um, the the chip is. Let me see if I can get this self sorted out first. Uh, right, so there's the chip. You can just see there coming into. Come into view. So there we go. Whatever that is, whatever it does, I don't know. But we have to make sure that the orientation is correct and it will go that way around, like that, where you'll see the dot on the chip marry up with the dot printed on the PCB, dot, dot to dot. But the first thing we need to do is let's just maneuver this around a bit. A bit of glare on there, isn't there? Let's see if I can. Uh... Yeah, that's probably a bit better. You can see a bit better now. Everything's similar when you're dealing with surface mount. Um, I've got this camera so close to the table so you can see it's not very efficient. So I just want to put a bit of solder on one of the pads and screw up all together because I have just gone and bridged those two pads. So um, hang on a minute. Right, I think I've pretty much got that chip lined up. So I've got a solder joint here which is holding it all in position at the moment, and I just sort of maneuvered it to line up the, the pins with their relevant pads, but those pads are right on top of each other. So what I think I'm gonna to have to do is soak it in flux using a flux pen, such as this one. Oh my God, 
God, that's a mess, isn't it? Better clean that up first. And um, then perhaps soak it in a bit of solder and see how that does for us. Um, but the hopefully we will avoid bridging those very, very tightly packed pins. Let's have a go. Right, well, I've got that chip installed now. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to work okay. I think it is. Basically, in order to install this chip, after having soldered down one of the pins like I showed earlier, um, I just flooded the pins with flux and then put a bucket load of solder down and then picked up all the excess solder with solder wick rubbing the um uh rubbing the the soldering iron between the solder wick and the pins getting rid of all that excess solder and then giving it a good clear up with isopropyl alcohol was it isopropyl how do you pronounce that isopropyl alcohol uh clean it all up and then have a good inspection of it using a magnifying glass and all looks good. The only problem, the only thing I worry about these um, is that doing it manually this way it means that there's quite a bit of heat being applied to the chip for perhaps longer than it should be. So there's always a danger of screwing up the chip, I guess. Um, any rate, that's the tricky one by any stretch of the imagination. That is that is the tough one to do in this kit. I think, hand on my heart, I've got it soldered on. Whether I've destroyed it in the process with heat, yeah, I don't know, until we uh, get the kit finished. Hopefully not, and uh, we can move on. So I'm going to finish populating the rest of this particular board, which really just now consists of that chip, which has got nice, large and well-spaced pads, so that's going to be easy enough to do. Um, the two switches and um, the power wires. So uh, let's get that done. Before we proceed further, you probably already noticed this, but the instructions actually explain what, all the, what the batteries do and also the purpose of the USB uh, interface. And the reason is, is that the, the battery that goes in there is the backup battery to hold memory. Um, so, you know, to retain the time when the battery, the main batteries, which will go on this board, um, pack up. However, um, they're saying that if you can get yourself a 3.7 volt lithium battery, um, instead of this, I guess, you just take this out, I suppose, and replace it with um, a lithium battery, then you can use the, um, uh, the micro USB port um, to charge it. So that's quite neat. That's actually a nicely thought out little solution. So yes, it's got five batteries, but four of them represent the better option of a 3.7 volt rechargeable lithium. One of them is for the, the uh, memory backup. Uh, and if you get yourself the lithium battery, then you can recharge it through micro USB. So that's, is rather good. Now I don't know what sort of 3.7 volt battery we're, we're looking at, um, but I will, um, I will certainly have a look into that. In the meantime, let's carry on with this build. Right, time for an update. Um, okay, so this side of the board, apart from the positive lead, which I've got to solder in just there, is basically complete. A um, few things to note. This battery holder is a slightly different design to the others that come in the kit so that's worth noting um, you'll see that uh, it's got the tabs are uh, vertical whereas these are horizontal um, so don't get mixed mixed up by trying to get put one of these on here it's, uh, it's this style versus that style is what you want on there and the other four of these go on the, the battery board, obviously. The other thing to bear in mind is that the push to make switches, um, they must be flush with the PCB um, on this side of the PCB. 
So on the side that the LCD is on, or the OLED screen is on rather, um, they protrude. But on this side, they're flush with the, pretty much flush with the, the PCB. And the reason for that will be uh, aligning it up with the, the case. So obviously the buttons need to line up with the case in the right, the right place. The um, rest of it is all very, very straightforward. Note the orientation of the diode, the black band is to the left. Um, and I think pretty much everything else is um, uh, straightforward. Um, <clears throat> as I say, I've been double checking for bridges across the pins on the main chip. Um, but pretty much everything else is the same um, in terms of orientation, apart from the um, the diodes and, of course, the chips. Note the position of the dot to the dot there, and the position of this chip, the dot has to be placed at the upper right-hand corner. Um, so as long as you get those orientations correct, you're good to go. So the next thing to do is to start populating the rear of the board. I don't think there's anything overly fascinating here. We've got some capacitors to go in there. Um, we've got the USB port to go in and um, a few other bits and pieces. Another chip in there. All fairly straightforward, capacitor there, and so on. So I don't think there's anything weird and wonderful about this side of the board. So let's populate that and see what it looks like after. Right, so we are basically done with the main board now. So items of interest to point out. Um, let's find a pointy thing. Oh, let's use my tweezers there, pointy things. Um, I've already pointed out that the uh, diode polarity there uh, with the black band, make a note of that. Um, covered that last uh, last section of the video. So here we are, slightly messy looking rear, but I think everything is okay. All pretty straightforward with your resistors and uh, quite a few capacitors. There's your power there for your plus and minus. Uh, polarity um, yeah it wasn't the greatest bit of soldering I've ever done that's the USB port <coughs> remember that's the one that you use only if you install a rechargeable lithium-ion battery which we don't have um, I've had to uh, order some CR1220s um, and the other thing to bear in mind is to make sure that the micro USB port is flush um, with the board in this manner. So if you can have a look at that from the side, that's about right. So the way you judge it is with these two pins here. Get one of these soldered in place and make sure it's, um, it's nice and f uh, flat to the board. Do the same with the other one and you're pretty much good to go. Then you just solder across these points. There's a couple of mounting uh, points here but obviously the PCB doesn't extend that far so whether they need to be cut off or not I don't know we'll have a look at that when we come to the case so yeah everything seems to be in place oh yeah up here um, you've got this tiny tiny LED the important thing to bear in mind is that you've got is it the cathode I think is green so let me see if I can get, bring that a bit closer. Um, yeah, there you go. So you can see on, uh, where's my pointy thing? I'm trying to look through the camera to do this. Uh, you can see that side has got green markings. That side has no green markings. And this is the orientation you want, green to the right. And they call it DB1. I don't know what DB stands for. It's normally LED when I see these. Um, but there you go. Um, this chip here, make sure the dot is in the upper left-hand corner, like you see there. 
Um, and I think everything else is pretty much as it is laid out here. Um, as I say, it's a nice job. We don't have to solder in this uh, strip for the, the LED, uh, for the OLED. Um, be careful with your soldering iron when, you, when you're soldering in that capacitor and these two capacitors in particular because they're a little bit close to the um, the ribbon cable for the LED screen so take take a cautious approach on that so the next thing um, is to populate the power supply board as I shall call it with all those batteries on there very good too. So um, as I say, I would like to get a 3.7 lithium, rechargeable lithium battery, but I need to have a look at what size um, they mean. I'm sure they must be available. You know, something just, just struck me that this isn't installed yet, obviously. And this is basically complete, assuming I haven't screwed it all up. So I'm thinking, let's bring this down a little bit. I'm thinking that I could actually whack five volts into the micro USB port and we should get some life in it. Which is not a bad thing to try and do, to be honest, because if the thing, if I have screwed the whole thing up and it's not working, then at least I know now before I carry on any further. And I can at least try and find the problems. So, hmm, what do you think? I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work because um, these two, these two go off to the 3.7 lithium, 3.7 volt lithium battery. This is providing five volts, um, so it's a higher voltage in the battery, so it will charge the battery. Um, I want, it really depends on whether it's just providing power to charge the battery, then the battery powers the watch, or whether it will power the watch as well, because clearly there's no battery there. Hmm. Do I dare try it, or am I going to blow it up in the process? I can't see any reason why it would be a problem. <laughs> It's, oh, sorry, it's lived dangerously. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I need to find... Okay. All right. Let's try. I have a USB cable here. What has got five volts on it? Um, I think, is that the right way around? Again, I'm looking through the damn camera here. Right, so... Um, okay. Is that going? Yeah, that's going. Well, there goes nothing. It'll either work or there'll be smoke. Hmm. Well, let's check my power supply. No, nothing there. Oh well. Never mind. Yeah. Not be it, is there? Oh, short them out. No. Nah. Good Lord, we have power. It's upside down, but we do have power. Well, it's just, and it's gone again. Ooh. Do I have a dodgy connection somewhere? Hmm, right. Well, we saw some life, which was interesting. Let me unplug this in case I'm causing trouble. Oh, oh, there it goes again. All right, let me unplug that. 
because that was awfully tight. I wonder if I've got another micro USB. I have one of these um, multi USB power supplies. It's got about 10 USB uh, supplies in it. I've got various cables in it. Let's try different different ones. See if it's the cable that's causing issues. Oh, that went straight on there. Oh, look, there's the LED. Let me uh, move that out of the way. So there you can see. And uh, oh, I think there's a bit of an intermittent there somewhere. And uh, you can see that the uh, screen is flickering. That's just the refresh rate. Ah, now I know why it's going off. It's probably because it's a watch and it doesn't want to be on all the time. So let's try one of the buttons. Nope. Yes. So there you go. So that would be the button to press to bring the display up. Obviously the time and date and all the rest of it is wrong. Um, but we can um, sort that out. Right, okay. Well, I think I'm going to call that a win and unplug the power. But what I am going to do is I'm going to, as I said, I've ordered some CR1220 batteries. That USB uh, connector is awfully tight. Oh, right. Okay, so that was that was interesting. Um, it is working. It is most definitely working. So there we have the main electronics put together. I've still got to put this together. But I do need to find if I can source a 3.7 volt rechargeable battery that will be suitable to go into this chat. Mm, exciting times. Okay, so the next thing to do will be to build up this board. Well, I'm almost done with this now. Um, I've finished building the case. I didn't think I'd go through the construction of the case because quite frankly the instructions are pretty clear on that and it's not very exciting the thing to bear in mind when constructing the case though is that you see these little brass links they need to be about f the the middle of the pack of uh of acrylic slices if you like because if you screw say this one all the way down to there so that the bottom of this particular brass connector is at the bottom then this screw isn't long enough to screw into the top of the connector so it needs to be midway through the pack that's the first thing um the buttons are operated very simply by this little plastic piece of plastic here and it's very unsophisticated but it works very well um the big problem I had was the lugs for the, the, the watch strap. Unfortunately, um, it is incredibly weak. Uh, very poorly designed. There's just not enough acrylic to hold the, uh, uh, the strap onto the little lugs. You can see, I'll bring this up, you can see where the lug is broken off there. And there really isn't that much holding on, uh, holding the, the strap onto the rest of the case. It's just too thin. So I'm going to have to consider super gluing that. But the problem with that is that if I do that, then I'm going to probably be mucking up this rear case to be able to unscrew it to replace batteries. So what I need to do possibly is swap swap over that uh, that slice of the case and that slice of the case so the lugs are further up and away from this this bottom plate anyway i need to play with that but that's a real shame but you get the idea of what it would look like um all together um i've got this power supply plugged in because I haven't got CR1220 batteries yet. I've got them on order. Um, but at the end of the day, you get the idea. Um, it's all it's all working very, 
not very fine at the moment so let me just grab the camera and uh, yeah so just to give you an idea that's what it would look like um now as far as setting up the the watch is concerned again you got all the instructions you don't need me to show you how to set up a watch um it's all fairly fairly straightforward but let's just have a look at that display which is really oh now that's my power bank going to sleep so it's um not providing any power there we go so that's nice um it shows the battery percentage, which is flicking around, as you can see there, as it's reading the power from the power bank. Let me press that button again, brings it up again. You've got the little green light to show it's active. And it's working. It's working absolutely fine. Um, the screen is really nice. It's actually got like a, a matte effect on top of the OLED, which uh, makes it nice and clear. Um, now, would you actually wear this on your wrist? Let's just see if I can show you what it looks like it's just unplug it we don't need it powered in um oh well it's not going to work because the straps won't hold on but you can see let's bring this up a bit so if i can alter the camera a bit but you can see it is a bit tall isn't it for a day-to-day -day watch but as a fun little kit to make as with all of these things let's be honest i've never made one of these kits yet it's actually given me something anything like useful except for one except for one perhaps i'll talk about that another time um but um yeah it's a great it's it's a it's a nice evening's entertainment to build this uh, interesting little watch um and once you finish with it if you are not going to use it yourself then there may be a little boy or a little girl in your home or your family who would probably love this absolutely love it but make sure they're old enough for something like this uh, and if in doubt, glue down the screw so they can't open it. Particularly with those button cells. Um, they can be absolutely lethal to children. So um, perhaps that's not a good idea. I don't know. But if you sort of really screw down this plate, then it should be safe enough. But uh, an older child would be uh, appreciative, I'm sure. Or even an adult. Who knows? Depends on what people in your family like or don't like. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll put that back in there. Um, it's a bit of a slight fail with the um, with the strap, which is um, unfortunate, but never mind. Um, at the very worst, you've got a spare strap for another watch. Um, I don't know what uh, width that is. I think it's probably about 20 mil one. I don't think it's 22. I think also that's 20 mil, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, it's a nice little kit. I've enjoyed making it. These, incidentally, are the little... Uh, strap pins that you get and um overall i hope you enjoyed this build as i say the instructions are clear enough for setting the watch and building the case so uh, uh you won't have any, won't have any issues there so with that glad to be back with another video and uh, i've got a few more kits lined up and we'll we'll do those as soon as we possibly can um so with that i will say stay safe in this mad old world of uh coronavirus and uh, tragedy and um, let's hope 2021 uh, turns out to be a better year we've got some more kids to come before then all the best catch you uh, next time